Hello, and welcome to New York's historic Penn Station. Today I'm going to be riding on New Jersey Transit's Northeast Corridor Line down to Hamilton. Penn Station is the home of Inner City Rail in New York, serving trains from Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, and the Long Island Railroad. Penn Station was once at the forefront of rail travel in the U.S., with a grand and ornate station building, much like Grand Central. But in 1962, the original building was demolished to make way for Madison Square Garden. The underground mezzanines were reconfigured to meet the new space requirements, resulting in a cramped, inefficient station. Work has begun on renovating the core of the station, which had hopefully fixed a lot of the problems. There have also been tandem construction projects in other areas around the station, including the brand new Moynihan Train Hall, an incredible station hall serving Amtrak and LIRR services. I will be going more in depth on Moynihan Train Hall in a future video, so stick around if that's something you're interested in seeing. New Jersey Transit's facilities are off to the left after entering Penn Station from 32nd Street. The first thing I decided to do was check to make sure that my train was on time, and to check what track I would be boarding from. The departure board showed that my train, New Jersey Transit Northeast Corridor Service number 3821, was to depart on time at 7.14 a.m., but it had not been assigned a track yet, so I had some time to wait before I could head to my train. In the meantime, I went off to buy my ticket. Ticketing is handled either through the service desks or through one of the many ticket machines located throughout the station. I chose to go with the ticket machine, as it was just easier for me. A one-way ticket on this journey cost me $16.25, which was reasonable given the almost 55-mile journey. Soon after buying my ticket, an announcement was made that our train was boarding on track 10. Instead of boarding immediately, I decided to head down to the end of our train and take a look at our locomotive for today. Our train was to be pulled by Bombardier ALP 46A locomotive number 4629, along with its set of Comet 2, 4, and 5 coaches. I decided to take up residence in one of the middle Comet 2s, choosing to sit in a group of four for optimal space. The interiors of these cars had clearly seen better days, the upholstery was quite worn and everything seemed a little tired. As far as the seating goes, there really isn't enough space to sit two people across from one another, as there's maybe three inches between my knees and the seat in front. There is an armrest towards the window side of the seat, but it's made out of a hard plastic and isn't particularly comfortable. The cushions on the seat are really lacking in padding, having been worn down by many years of use. About 10 minutes after boarding, our train pulled out of Penn Station and began the one hour and 20 minute journey down to Hamilton. As we begin our journey, let's take a look at some quick stats about our train. Our train this morning is New Jersey Transit Northeast Corridor Service number 3821 and is powered by Bombardier ALP 46A locomotive number 4629. Each ALP 46A is powered by four Mitrac DR3700F traction motors, producing 1,875 horsepower each for a total of 7,500 horsepower. ALP 46As are rated for a top speed of 125 miles per hour, but are limited to 100 miles per hour by New Jersey Transit. Train consists can vary on MJT services, with our train consisting of four Bombardier Comet 2s, three Bombardier Comet 4s, and one Alstom Comet 5. Comet 5s are operated on the ends of NJT trains as cab cars to remove the need for trains to turn around at Termini. While we're cruising through New Jersey, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. I have a lot of awesome content planned for the next couple months, so stick around if you want to see more. The first stop after crossing over into New Jersey is Secaucus, a junction that serves as a connection between New Jersey Transit's Newark and Hoboken divisions.
After pulling out of Secaucus, the line goes over Portal Bridge, one of the oldest pieces of infrastructure on the Northeast Corridor. Opened in 1910, the now 120-year-old Swing Bridge still serves as a major artery of rail travel between New York and New Jersey. Let's take a walk around the train. The first thing I noticed when walking between cars was that the far door would not open immediately, which goes to show that these cars are clearly not in the best shape of their lives. The other thing I noticed was just how empty the train was. I understand that it was an early morning service, but it was a weekday, so I expected to see more passengers on board. Upon arriving at the front of the train, I was met with a metal bar across the entrance to the first car. Why NJT decided to block off the first and last cars of this train is beyond me. I understand that the crew do not want to have to deal with people interfering with the service, but I had never seen a whole car blocked off like they were here. A side effect of this was that the sole bathroom on board this train was in the last car, which was now blocked off from passenger use, meaning there was effectively no bathroom on board, which was super inconvenient. After returning to my car, I decided to take a look at a single row seat. There was just about as much space between the seat in front as there was in the double row, but now you don't have to worry about the passenger across from you. There is still the armrests on each end of the seat, both made of that same plastic. There isn't really any space to stretch out with my legs only just sliding under the seat. In addition, the seatbacks can be flipped back and forth to accommodate groups of different sizes, which is pretty cool. Newark Penn Station is next on the list of stops, connecting New Jersey Transit and Amtrak trains to PATH services and Newark's many bus routes. Despite being the most advanced rail network in the U.S., the Northeast Corridor is incredibly dated. A good portion of the infrastructure has been operating with little to no remodeling since the late 1930s and early 1940s. The Metuchen substation seen here has been in service since 1933 with only a few upgrades. After passing through Edison, our ALP46A can finally open the taps and hit that top speed of 100 miles an hour. It's awesome to look out the window at these speeds and see the world whip by. I know it's not the fastest service on the network, but 100 miles an hour is much faster than most commuter trains in the US. After just over an hour and 20 minutes of traveling, our train finally pulled into Hamilton. The observant among you will notice that this is not the train I started my journey on. I had to make a pit stop in Princeton Junction just before this, and thus swapped onto the next service heading to Trenton. I'll be covering these bi-level coaches in a future video, so don't feel like you're going to miss out on anything. Hamilton Transit Center is an oddity on the line. The station looks as though it serves a large population of commuters, but its location says otherwise. It's rather far from the populations it would serve, but I guess that explains the large parking garage and surface lot on the east side of the station. Heading to the center of the platforms, passengers can take the escalator up to the covered walkway over the four tracks. The station is eerily quiet, with very little going on. The only thing that is really nice about the station is the Dunkin' Donuts shop located in the main station building. I decided to stop by Hamilton for one reason only and that is the awesome filming location for high-speed trains on the Northeast Corridor. And that concludes today's trip report. Next week, I will be back in Los Angeles for the final video in the LA series, taking my flight back to Austin from LAX. 
If you're new around here, please hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon so you never miss another video. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.